Excuse me, sir, is this the Delta House? Sure. Come on in. They have cold beer and action on the game. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. It's time for the Degenerates Next Door. Dollar, dollar, bills, y'all. All All right. Back once again. I'm Jason Hammer. I do the Hammer and Nigel show in Indianapolis. Rated number one. Oh. Rob Kendall joins me from the Kendall and Casey show in Indianapolis. Also... Rated number one, so congratulations. Well, think about it, Hammer. We're not only number one in everyone's hearts, but also in the ratings. I wanted to point out that we were number one in ratings because I wanted to take away from the fact that both of us took a dump last week. Man, wild week one. You finished two and three. I finished one, three, and one. And I want to talk about that here in just a moment because we are transparent yeah. on this program. So I won. You did. You beat me head to head. You were the better loser of both of us last week. Now, here's the question I have for you because we have a pro, a professional that comes in and picks with us later on in the program. I took his bet and bet that one. Do I get credit for that too? No. Oh, nothing. No. But we did put a winner as a Twitter exclusive on the Degenerates Next Door Twitter feed. And yes, it's called Twitter. Stop with this X crap, okay? It's Twitter. We had the Vols covering over 40, so we cashed that ticket. But what do we take away from what we've seen in week zero and week one, Rob? Okay, so two two things here. Number one, college football, has, and I've always felt this way, is way harder to bet than, than the NFL because you're dealing with children and frat bros. And you never know how a 21- or 22-year-old kid is going to respond. It's a little easier. I mean, the NFL, they're professionals, right? You have a little bit better idea. You, you never know. And in the case of you, those you were done in by two dirty, dirty, rotten kicks. I mean, you could have had a great week. But again, you, when you're dealing with college kids, you just never know. So here's what I've taken away. I'm going to break this down as easy as I can. Georgia, Good. Right? This is the kind of breakdown you get on the Degenerates That's Next strong. Door. Yeah. Georgia, good. College kickers. Unless you've got North Carolina on your jersey, <laughs> not good. And some weeks, you're the dog. And some weeks, you're the fire hydrant. And last week, I was a fire hydrant. One, three, and one. But I was two plays yep. away, Rob, yeah. from having a winning weekend. That's the margin of wins and losses. I do have one thing I want to say, though, that I, 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 look, I got to call you out on. What was the game? It was the second game you bet on. There was a Friday night game, right? TCU and Stanford. I'm staying up to watch this because I'm now invested. I hate this, but I'm now invested in you doing well because even though I loathe you, we're in on the show together. And so I'm staying up till, I don't know, it seemed like two in the morning, cheering you get the cover. You had TCU minus nine and a half against Stanford. You get a, a late score, puts you up 10. I'm cheering for you. I'm texting you incessantly. I'm not getting any response. Then, of course, they go down those dirty, rotten Stanford Cardinal, kick a field goal instead of going for the touchdown late, which they probably wouldn't have scored, which would have got you the cover. And then the next morning, after I stay up and watch the game, I hear from you, huh, wake up to a loss. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. I stayed up for your bet. So I believe in the mojo. I believe in the juju. I'm superstitious. When I was watching that game, things were not going my yeah. way. So I started drinking heavily. <laughs> and some would say I fell asleep. Others would say I passed out. And you know what? Almost pulled it off. But almost isn't good enough. So may I have the floor for just a moment? Absolutely. Can I have a moment of personal privilege Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Because I've got beef with the gambling gods. And I need to have a conversation (laughs) with the gambling gods right now. (laughs) Dear gambling gods, I've been a good degenerate. I spend money. I promote sports betting. I've been doing this since it was legal and even illegal. As a matter of fact, and Rob, you know this, when sports betting was becoming legal in the state of Indiana, 
some of the representatives from Indiana's General Assembly reached out to me for my thoughts yeah. because they were trying to push through a bill that didn't include mobile apps and betting. Yeah. And I said, no, it cannot be that way. So, listen, what the hell? <laughs> Why treat me this way? Minnesota's kicker missing a 27-yarder early and then the game-winning 45-yarder? TCU giving up a scoring drive in under a minute, the final minute of the game, and also giving up 45 yards and penalties on the opening drive, third and 19, third and 17, and you allow Stanford to convert with penalties? What did I do to deserve this? Okay? So let's get one thing perfectly clear. I feel like Pedro Serrano having a discussion with Joe Boo at this point. If you know help me now, I say, screw you gambling gods. I do it myself because I'm a little upset right now. Anything that could go wrong has gone wrong for me. I always say water finds its level. Well, I'm due for a tsunami after what happened to me in week zero and week one. Yeah, because don't forget week zero, you got the one game where the two scoop and scores did you in. Two, not one. Not one, yeah. two defensive touchdowns, two scoop and scores. And this is such a hard position for me to be in because for years I have just taken joy. I didn't even need to bet on my own games. I just found out what you bet on, and I cheered for the opposite. And now, because we're in this show together as partners, I can't even take joy in your failure. So it's really it's a bad position for me to be in. I'm not one to try to screw the mojo here, but I think the gambling gods owe me, and I think they owe all of us. Clark Griswold, your thoughts. He owes us. Doesn't he owe us? Huh? He owes the Griswolds, right? <laughs> hey, right he owes us. The gambling gods owe us. And week two is here, Rob. It's overreaction week, as it's known as in the gambling circles. So let's get into it. We got a big one here. Texas on the road in the big house at Michigan. The defending national champions. We're going to give you... Rob's play on this in just a moment. But first, let's bring back somebody that got a dub last week, our professional handicapper. Because again, Rob and I are not professionals. No. We do the homework, we study, we live and die on this kind of stuff, but we have day jobs. Somebody that does this for a living and is a big, hairy American winning machine is David Stefanoff of followneverfade.com. David, talk to me about Texas and Michigan. What do you think? This is going to be a mismatch. Both these teams in the Final Four last year. The thing is, Michigan reloaded the covers. Empty coach, new coach. Uh, Texas is the same. They lost some receivers, but they reloaded. Uh, Michigan is not very good this year, guys. Uh, there's a reason why they're a seven-point dog at home in the big house. Michigan, they beat Fresno State last week. Michigan's best player on the field last week was their kicker. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be a mismatch. Um, Vegas is definitely begging everybody to bet the over 44 in this game. The total is an awful low. They're begging everybody to bet the over here. Um, I love Texas here. This game's not going to go over the point spread. Vegas is begging you to take the over. But we're going to go with Texas. We're going to lay the seven at, at Michigan in the big house. I really think this is a mismatch all around. Uh, I know Texas got running backs maybe hurt, but they're deep at receiver. they got the, a great quarterback. Uh Michigan, new quarterback, offensive line. Of the week. They got some guys back on defense, don't get me wrong, but how are they going to score? Like I said last week, their best player on the field was their kicker versus Fresno State. They didn't put the game away to late versus Fresno State, and Fresno State's not going to be very good this year. I'm going to lay the seven. I, I, I give everybody out there, all the rest of the degenerates, to don't, don't fall for the trap on the over, but lay the seven with Texas at Michigan. And I thank you, Rob and Hammer, for having me on every week. Check me out on all platforms, guys. I'm on Facebook, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Just type in followinterfay.com. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff on the website. Check us out, message you directly. But good luck to everybody this week. And we're going to lay, lay the seven with Texas um, in the big house against Michigan. All right, Rob, you heard what David Stefanoff had to say. You have got action on this one. So if you if you listen to his pick, obviously he's going with Texas. But the other thing that he said is that over Vegas is begging people to go over on the 44 and a half. And it sounds like on paper, such a low number, especially when you have a team like Texas with Quinn Ewers, who could be the number one pick in the draft. He could be the Heisman trophy winner. I know you and I both have action on him potentially being the Heisman trophy winner and Texas as the national champions. 
but Texas's defense, and this, you know, they scored a bajillion points last week, but their defense is really good. And Michigan's defense, their offense stinks. S T I N K S stinks. But that defense, top five defense in the country. And so when you put those two things together, it's at Michigan, which might make it a little harder for Texas to score. 44 and a half isn't nearly as small of a number as it seems like. It's 11 points a quarter if you're going under. If you get a couple of sustained drives that result in field goals or, as you know very well now, missed field goals, that 44 and a half is right in play. I am with David. I think that's a sucker bet on that over. I'm going under 44 and a half. So seven is the spread. It seems like that's on the upward swing here. Was at six, six and a half most of the weekend. Now it's in seven. And this is the importance, if you're playing a side, of shopping around for right. the best number. Again, we're not wed to a single sports book on this show. You can look at FanDuel or Bet Rivers or Caesars. Open up multiple accounts. You're not a degenerate unless you have multiple <laughs> accounts. So find the best number. All right, another interesting game. I don't know if it's marquee, but I think it's really interesting. I think it's going to have eyeballs on it. Colorado at Nebraska. Yeah. Colorado is getting seven and a half at Lincoln to take on Nebraska. Let me tell you why I'm hitching my wagon to Colorado. Now, stop laughing at me here. It's not like I'm somebody that's in love with what's happening at Colorado. They stink up front. But let's not act like this Nebraska team is the team that's got Tommy Frazier running out of the tunnel either. <laughs> so you feel like a freshman quarterback, a true freshman quarterback, who did play well last week for Nebraska, is good enough to cover more than a touchdown against a first-round NFL draft pick quarterback and one of the favorites for the Heisman Trophy. Travis Hunter is the best player on the field, and Colorado has the best quarterback. And I've always said, if things are somewhat equal, and I do think these teams are more equal than this number leads on, I go with who's got the better quarterback, and if they're getting points, I'm there. Again, we're going to say this a lot throughout this podcast today. It's overreaction week. Everybody looks at what Colorado did in week zero, week one, kind of struggled a little bit, found a way to win. But North Dakota State's a pretty good team. Yeah, they're not bad. It's not like they, you know, were some slap nut squad. They're pretty damn good. So give me Colorado catching more than a touchdown with the better quarterback, the best player on the field being Travis Hunter. Last year, Colorado won 36 to 14. They basically bring all the skill players back. Might be a shootout because Colorado stinks up front. If I'm catching the points, I'm in. Colorado plus seven and a half. Yeah, you mentioned the number. It's 57 and a half is our number. And you're right. Sanders is a video game player. But there are a couple things people aren't realizing. A, Nebraska's defense is pretty good. I don't know if we're back to the old black shirt, you know, days of the 1980s and 90s. But they're pretty good. They only gave up 205 yards last week. Now, obviously, that team not nearly as good as what they'll see with Sanders and Colorado. But Colorado only got they put up a lot of yards right they they put up a lot of yards but they only got 31 at home against North Dakota State that's the first thing and B Colorado only got 59 yards on the ground in 23 attempts totally one dimensional Nebraska a week to prepare at home they're likely going to be able to keep Sanders in check he you know he could easily throw for 300 plus yards but Nebraska's offense is much improved. They got this five-star freshman quarterback, and you say, well, wouldn't that hurt you on the under? No, I think it actually might help because they'll control the ball more. They're going to be able to run the ball and move the ball, hopefully move the ball without points, and keep Sanders off the field. 57-and-a-half is 14-and-a-half a quarter. So, again, we get some sustained drives. They don't, they don't get in the end zone. We get some sustained drives and the hammer special with some missed field goals. I actually think that the under is going to hit on this. I'm taking 57 and a half. I'm going under. And this should tell you how bad my luck has been so far this season. 
when someone misses a kick, it's called pulling a hammer at this point. <laughs> because if I need a meaningful field goal at some point, it ain't going to happen. And here's the one thing we should point out. You mentioned it briefly, though. We are not, uh, we do not profess to be professionals. We do not look like male Kardashians. We're not the chicks, as you say, with the big candular areas. We're just two dudes who watch sports, and we are the sports betting audience. This is who sports bettors are. Yeah. Right? It's people like us. And by the way, if you look at some of the great handicappers in this industry, people who I actually like a great deal, a lot of them struggled last week. Yeah. Like the folks at Wager Talk, not all of them, but I know Marco and Kelly in Vegas, who's awesome, and I love Kelly. Uh, but I felt a little better watching others on the struggle bus. Misery loves company, right? So overreaction week is the time to get and, right. And one other thing we ought, to, we ought to point out is you should never bet more than what you're comfortable losing, right? You should, you should, if, you're, if, you're, if you can't afford to lose it, don't bet. It's that betting responsibly thing, right? We can't say that enough. Always be sure to bet responsibly. Right. And also, nobody has a gambling problem if they're winning. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's when you start getting, you know, kicks missed against you that things start to, you know, become a problem. So if you do have a problem, 1-800-9-WITH-IT, gamble responsibly. All right, let's do some good old-fashioned fanboy stuff, yeah. right? Rob is an unapologetic Notre Dame homer. Like, if you didn't think he was smug and arrogant before, when Notre Dame wins and he wins a bet, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. So... You're back once again with a Notre Dame pick, Rob. What are we looking at? Yeah, uh, and Hammer is such a good sport. That entire Notre Dame game, I was telling him how much they suck and how they're going to blow it and how it's awful, and then and they won, and I said, see, I told you so. <laughs> and that under hit, the incredible under. All right, so Notre Dame, that's an impressive win, right? I know Texas A&M isn't the best team in the SEC. But College Station, when that joint gets rocking and rolling, it's a tough place to play. And they did put up some points. Texas A&M's defense is pretty good. And Notre Dame did way better than I thought. They scored, ended up scoring 23 points. Their defense is pretty super, as we talked about it would be. But I think their offense can get much better in Week 2. They're at home against uh, Northern Illinois. The over in this game is 46 and a half. Now, the spread, it's come down a little bit. It started at 30 and a half. I think it's down to 28 and a half. But that's a lot for me. I've seen this happen before with Notre Dame where they win some big game and then they come back home. And then, you know, I'm not even watching the first half because I'm told it's a non contest. And then you look at halftime and it's a seven point game. So that spread scares me a little bit. However,. I think Notre Dame is going to continue to score points. Notre Dame's defense is pretty good, but Northern Illinois scored a lot of points last week. They can put the ball in the end zone. I think you could see something like a 35-13 type affair. That gets me over 46 and a half. I'm going over. So Notre Dame's defense, really good, but this does fit the category of a letdown spot. Coming off that emotional win, you know, nationally televised game down at College Station. Game day was there. You come home. Everybody on campus is telling you how great you are. And here comes a Northern Illinois team. This is their Super Bowl. So they're going to give you everything they got. And Marcus Freeman still stinks. Okay, see, that's what I was going to ask you. Are you ready to get off his ass stinks. yet? Stinks. Stinks. Okay. okay. So you are a homer for Notre Dame. I am a homer for for the Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell am I listening to? These guys, they're only talking about the teams that they like. Well, there's a lesson in that. Well, I have a microphone and you don't. <laughs> so you will listen to every damn word I have to say! And we've actually got a pretty decent matchup here. Two ranked teams. Tennessee it's technically a neutral site game against NC State, but it's in Charlotte. So Tennessee is a road favorite laying more than a touchdown, seven and a half. Again, it's overreaction week. NC State is better than what we saw against Western Carolina last Thursday. They're better than that. I think they got caught looking ahead. But also, NC State could not stop the run. And Tennessee... One of their strengths this year 
is the beasts that they have up front, both offensively and defensively. I love the offensive line of Tennessee. They're going to be able to run the ball, and NC State can't run the ball. And when Tennessee can establish the run, this means that Nico, here we go, Ia Maliava. Yeah! Thank you. Is going to be able to open up that passing game. And as a volunteer fan, it's so refreshing to have a guy back that has actual touch on the football instead of Joe Milton, who, yes, he's got a strong arm, but from me to you, Rob, would throw it 95 miles per hour right at his feet. It's refreshing to have a good quarterback with touch again. I like Tennessee in this spot. They're going to play tempo. And when that Tennessee offense is clicking, it's fun. It's fun to watch. Seven and a half is not that big of a number because I really don't think this is going to be a road game. But just like we told you last week, even though they didn't win the game, LSU fans invaded Las Vegas. That's what Tennessee fans are going to do to Charlotte. Can I say what how refreshing it is as a Notre Dame fan to watch Brian Kelly lose? Every time to see him lose the smile that it brings to my face. And if they weren't going to cover, which it became kind of obvious they weren't, I wanted to see them lose. Every time Brian Kelly is sad, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> uh, but I like Tennessee in this spot. Better quarterback, established the run, that tempo offense. I just don't know if NC State's got the offensive firepower to hang around. I'm going to lay seven and a half with Rocky Top Tennessee. All right, Rob, we got a little uh, in-state action here. Iowa State on the road at Kinnick Stadium taking on the Hawkeyes. Iowa is a two-and-a-half point favorite, seeing the total right around 35-and-a-half. All right, so the over in this game is 35-and-a-half, and that is such a low number, Hammer. But how many times in a row did you and I last year? It was like 29, 30, 31. You and I are looking at each other like, yeah, I know Iowa's offense stinks and their defense is really good, but you and I could go out there and and help put up 29 (laughs) points. And how many bets in a row did we lose betting the over in these pathetically low games? Um, Iowa's defense is excellent. It's excellent. We saw it again in week one. Iowa State only turned out 21 points against North Dakota and really struggled to run the ball. That's going to put them in a lot of third and longs, and that is a death sentence against Iowa. So I don't expect them to do a lot of scoring. Iowa's going to eat that up. Iowa only had six points at half last week against Illinois State. Now, they went on some bizarro scoring blitz in the second half, but that first half looked exactly like what we thought we'd see out of Iowa. I think Illinois State being the opponent had something to do with that. Well, that's the point, right? And you only got six in the first half. Iowa State's much better than Illinois State. Iowa's QB was awful last year in the game against Iowa State, going just 12 of 22 for 123 yards. 35 and a half is low, but I'm living dangerously. Let's go under. You are taking the under in Iowa State and Iowa under 35 and a half. So low, isn't it? All right, let's go. I mean, that's so low, isn't it? Um, Again, take a drink every time we say this, but week two is always overreaction week. So with that being said, we're going to play a little game here, Rob. Uh Uh-oh. It's called... Who's going to screw me this week? (laughs) And we turn our attention (laughs) to the Oregon Ducks. (laughs) Last week, Oregon did not look like the second or third or fourth or fifth best team in the country. Oregon struggled last week. 24-14 win against Idaho. I think, again, that's the exception and not the rule. So Boise State at Oregon. Now, Boise State put up big numbers last week, 56-45 to win, but it was against Georgia Southern. The competition level is about to get cranked up a notch here. And I think the coaching staff of Oregon has got their attention now. No more sleepwalking. Dylan Gabriel is going to put the ball in the end zone, and he's going to force Boise State to abandon what they do best, and that's run the football. You look at how Boise State scored their touchdowns last week. They had a running back that had 20 carries, 267 yards, 
and six touchdowns. Multiple touchdown runs of over 70 yards against Georgia Southern. That ain't happening against Oregon. So, again, water finds its level. It's overreaction week. Oregon didn't look sharp. Oh, my God, is Boise State the greatest show on turf? I don't think either of those things are necessarily true. If you were just looking at this point spread a couple weeks ago, before the first game were played, what do you think the point spread would be? I would say anywhere from 21 to 24 points. Right now it's 18 and a half. I'm going to lay 18 and a half here for Oregon. I feel like this is one of my favorite bets of the week, which means they will for sure screw me somehow in the end, Rob. You ever do this where you listen to the other guy, like when you're doing a show with someone and you go, his bets are so much better than mine. Like I did better than you last week. You did. But you have me totally convinced that your bets are so much better than mine. And if I beat you again, <laughs> I'm going to laugh right in your face. Um, Let's talk about some SEC action. It just matters more, Rob. We got South Carolina, South Kakalaki going down to take on Kentucky. The Wildcats are a 10 and a half point favorite looking at the total at around 44 and a half. That is trending up just a little bit. Got a conference game this weekend. Break it down. South Carolina barely beat Old Dominion at home. I got to admit, Hammer, I didn't even know Old Dominion had a football team. I got <laughs> uniforms and everything, as Jake Taylor once said. <laughs> I thought they were just some team that barely made the NCAA tournament every so often and always lost in the first round. Uh, but Kentucky isn't exactly a world beater. And the spread is 10 and a half, which is too much for me. I think, I think South Carolina stinks. I don't know how bad they actually are, and 10.5 sounds like a lot. Kentucky's defense is really good. I know that. South Carolina only got 23 against Old Dominion, so I don't see a lot of scoring coming from South Carolina. Now, 44.5 is a low number, especially in the SEC, but I think I'm going to have to butt pucker. I'm going to probably have to do it late. I'm probably going to need some sort of meaningless goal line stop. You know how it always goes, but give me the under. I'm going under 44.5. Under 44 and a half, South Carolina at Kentucky. All right, I'll keep it in the SEC, and I'm turning to Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. The Alabama Crimson Tide hosting South Florida here. Now, last week, South Florida scored 48 points against Bethune. Alabama. Against who? Scored 63 in a shutout against Western Kentucky. Who was the team they played? Bethune. B-E-T-H-U-N-E. Sounds like one of those schools that Hickory beats on their way to the finals in the movie Hoosiers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, you know how I feel about Alabama's quarterback, Jalen Milrow. You like him. One of my dark horse candidates yeah. for the Heisman. And what I've noticed about this Alabama squad from – early practices to what we saw last week, they seem looser without Nick Saban screaming at them all the time. They're celebrating on the field. They're throwing horns up. You never would have saw that with Nick Saban. Feels like they're a little bit looser. They're playing a little bit more free. And Kalen DeBoer, he knows he's got to put up big numbers because everybody else in the SEC is. He's got to keep up with the Joneses, right? You know Ole Miss is going to try to score 70. Tennessee is going to try to score 70. Hell, Auburn and Arkansas put up huge numbers this past week. Missouri has got a really good offense. You can't just win in the SEC. You have to put up big numbers. And there's a big number here. 31 and a half is the spread. But what I've noticed so far is that there's a big discrepancy between the haves yeah. and the have-nots. These super conferences where everybody is joined together have made it so the haves beat the brakes off of the have-nots. 31 and a half is the number at the time of this podcast. I would run and get that quickly. I just can't see that uh, getting any better than that. I'm going to lay 31 and a half with Alabama against South Florida. All right, let's take a little break. When we come back, We've got the Degenerate Special, and we're going to get nuts. Don't go anywhere. This is the Degenerates Next Door. I think this is becoming one of my favorite segments on the show. 
Rob Kendall, are you ready to get nuts? Let's do it. You ready to get nuts? Let's do it. All right. You want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. <laughs> Give it to me. So each week we take a very, 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 very long shot and say if you'd like to have a little fun and throw down a little cash with the opportunity at a big old reward, this is the Let's Get Nuts segment. Which, by the way, this was before we started the show, but the original Let's Get Nuts was the Indiana Fever at 60-1 to to win the WNBA championship several weeks ago. I saw them at 19-1 to the other day. They are the team right now. Trending in the right direction. So we're getting nuts here. What do you got? I got – we go to Major League Baseball, and we are getting near playoff time, and so it's you can still get some pretty good value because the playoffs aren't set in stone yet, and technically most of these teams haven't even qualified for the playoffs. But if we go to Major League Baseball, the Milwaukee Brewers are currently on the board at 22-1. to 1. That means for every $1 you bet, you're going to get $22 back. A $5 investment would pay you out $110. And here's the thing about the Brewers. Right now, they're only a half game out of getting a bye in the first round of the playoffs. But if they don't, they're really consistent and they're really good both home and away. So that means if you get some road games... And they're in a weak division, too, because that means you're playing the Pirates, the Reds, the Cardinals down the stretch. Yeah, so you got a decent chance of getting that by. If you don't, they're really good at home. They're also good on the road. And you can get these guys at 22-1 to right now. You look at the value of the other teams that are ahead of them. The money is with the Brewers. It gives you somebody to cheer for for the remainder of the regular season. You're buying basically basically two months of entertainment for five bucks. I'm in on the Milwaukee Brewers at 22-1 to to win the World Series. All right. You want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. I will see your brewers and let's get nuts. And I will raise you the Degenerate Special. Yeah. It's time for Hammer's Degenerate Special. Now, before we begin, I need to ask you a few questions. Yes. Is it considered a degenerate special if it involves a team from the Big Ten? No. Is it considered a degenerate special if it involves a team from the ACC? No. But what if I told you it was Northwestern and Duke? Does that constitute a degenerate special? That does, in fact, constitute a degenerate special. (laughs) And that is what we're looking at here. Duke at Northwestern. We got a little Friday action Uh here. 9 o'clock Eastern kickoff on a Friday night. This is going to be so miserable to watch because not only are these teams awful, and Northwestern is a a two-and-a-half home favorite, and I say home like a smartass because they don't have a home field right now. It's being worked on. It's renovations taking place. So they're playing on a practice field that is right there by the lake. So we're anticipating some severe winds coming in off the lake Friday night in Chicago. Temperatures kind of on the downward slope. Could see some rain. No home field. This is a horrible, horrible atmosphere for anybody that's on the campus of Evanston, Illinois. And with this Duke team... They've got a transfer quarterback from Texas. Now, he could not see the field at Texas. But to be fair, ahead of him are Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning. Yeah, that's true. So he's now at Duke. Duke is coming off a 26-3 win last week against the Fighting Musks of Elon. (laughs) I don't don't know if that's what they're called, but that's what we're calling them. Northwestern struggled with Miami of Ohio 13-6. And again, in that game, wind was a factor blowing off the lake. We're anticipating that this week, Northwestern has lost five straight games to Duke. Duke has covered all five of those games here. Give me Duke and the points. I'm catching almost a field goal with Duke here, plus two and a half. Better quarterback, no home field advantage. And that is this week's Degenerate Special. All right. Going to take one more time out. When we come back, we will reset all of the picks that we've got here on The Degenerates Next Door. 
All right, let's take one more look at our plays. Rob Kendall, run down the board. Yeah, so I've got uh, Texas at Michigan. That spread is up to 7.5. I'm with you, Hammer. I think they'll probably cover, but that's too rich for me. I'm going under 44.5 points. Texas on the road at Michigan. I've got Notre Dame at home against Northern Illinois going over 46.5. Iowa versus Iowa State under 35.5. Colorado at Nebraska under 57.5. Kentucky versus South Carolina, Carolina under 44 and a half. And the let's get nuts. You can get the Milwaukee Brewers right now at 22 to one to win the World Series. I am looking at Colorado catching more than a touchdown at Nebraska. Give me Colorado plus seven and a half. I'm laying seven and a half. Tennessee over North Carolina State in Charlotte. I like Oregon to cover at home in a bounce back spot laying 18 and a half against Boise, Alabama. Big number, but this is what has to happen in the SEC now. Kalen DeBoer putting his stamp on things, laying 31 and a half with the tide in Tuscaloosa and your degenerate special Duke getting two and a half points at Northwestern this Friday night at nine. Should we just remind everybody to the rules here? If you take our bets and you win, congratulations, we don't need to thank you, we don't want to thank you. But if you lose, we're all adults here. We're giving you our advice. We're giving you what we think is going to happen, but we don't want to hear it from you. You have your own money. You make your own bets. So we don't need to thank you, but we don't want to hear it from you if you don't win. Leave us alone. <laughs> I feel guilty even saying if you win with my pick after the heartbreaking <laughs> crap that I had last week. But again, we're riding the ship this week. Water finds its level. Right. I had my little speech with the gambling gods early in the show, and I feel like we're turning a corner here. All right. Coming up this uh, Thursday, another podcast drops the NFL edition. So every Tuesday, we're going to drop this college football show Every Thursday, moving forward, we will have the NFL edition. So tell your friends, download it, share it, crack open a beer with us, and say something inappropriate to somebody. It's the way we get down here at The Degenerates Next Door. And follow us on Twitter. Look for The Degenerates Next Door, the little cartoon picture of Rob and I. You never know when we might drop a Twitter exclusive. Yeah. Last week it paid off. We will talk to you next week. Tuesday for the college football show this Thursday for the NFL show. I got some drinking to do. We are the degenerates next door.